Sensex and Nifty in flat, but uh, at a new record close, the Nifty fails to stay above 24,900 mid-caps outperform. Colgate Palmolive India regains its sparkle with toothpaste volume growth far exceeding expectations on the back of a pickup in rural demand and profitability to season improvement. The stock twinkles in trade. Power Grid ups its FY25 CapEx target to 18,000 crore rupees from 15,000 crore rupees earlier and charts an aggressive path ahead. NTPC stays on track to add 26 gigawatts by 2032 lists its uh, new green business uh, and eyes double-digit profit growth ahead. Both stocks jump. Hello and welcome to Markets Forward, your go-to show where we aim to get you all the key data points with regard to today's session and also get you ready for tomorrow's trade. I'm Rajiv Souza. Join me as always. Surbhi Upadhyay. Well, Surbhi, we thought we headed to the 25,000 mark today, but it wasn't to be yet again. Fear of heights. <laughs> I think that's what maybe we can say. Though, I mean, I'm surprised the bulls are fearful of anything, considering they've been on such a huge charge. But yes, that's what we had today. Uh, we'll talk about it as we go forward. Uh, lots to sort of cover over the next 20 minutes as well. All the key developments on the street, top corporate voices, lots of earnings, and then, of course, the events to track. But very quickly, Nigel, just to talk about, you know, the day, uh, it really summed up in the intraday graph. And we should pull that up for the Nifty or the Bank Nifty because we were cruising along till about 2.30 or so. Uh, and then suddenly there was selling coming in again. This is the second day running that the market, market has sold off in a manner of 10 to 15 minutes. It happened yesterday. It happened again today. And uh, the result was on the screen. So weakness in banks for sure. The bank index was actually leading the market up till 2.30. But then things turned around completely. But uh, there were some other segments as well. I mean, consumer stocks saw some buying, uh, saw some selling. Uh, there was weakness in IT once again. And some of the FMCG names, they were also looking at profit taking. The, the action was more about individual stocks, specific reactions coming in on earnings. And some very, very sharp reactions in that. And Nigel, we'll talk about it as we go forward. Well, that's right. You know, Surbhi, today there was another factor that played out. It's a Tuesday. So we have the Nifty Financial Services Index that plays out the weekly expiry. So we just pull up the Nifty as well as the Nifty Financial Services Index. If you try to get a split screen up, you'll see that, you know, both of them fell in tandem, which told you that some of those non-banking names, which are insurers, NBFCs, which are part of the Nifty Financial Services Index, there's a bit of an overlap with banks as well. You know, that's the reason why, in fact, we could be a little bit nervous by the time we wound up. That screen tells you the picture. Perfect. Well, you know, if you also see, there were a couple of themes, though, that played out today. Uh, OMCs, HBCL's numbers, when we started off trade, everyone thought that those numbers were disappointing. Well, that stock, just take a look at it, ended virtually at the high point of the day. IOC came out of the set of numbers. First look at it, it looks disappointing, but the street wants to buy into these names. They believe they're generating a number of cash. Post general election, maybe the risk with regard to, uh, you know, on petrol prices, that's behind them. And those stocks, actually, they were shining in today's trading session. But um, let's run you through what we have on the show for you today. We start off with all the top movers and shakers of the day with Vivek. Well, stocks on our radar include Colgate, Varun Beverages and NTPC. And stay tuned as we tell you why these stocks are buzzing in trade. CNBC TV 18's popular segment, D Street Chatter, is also on the show. Nimesh will be joining you to tell us why protein was buzzing in today's trading session. Last but not the least, we'll delve into the key market events you need to track for tomorrow's session. But let's get straight to the top movers and shakers of the day. Vivek joins us to help us out. Vivek, take it away. Well, thank you so much for that. You know, very volatile trading session, like you mentioned. Uh, but the first set of stocks, you know, that'll be on our radar is the entire PLC basket. You did allude to the OMCs. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, some of the top gainers even on the broad end of the market. So uh, these names itself. Uh, Along with that, even NTPC and Pargrid post the analyst meet, they too joined the rally. So OMCs and past utility stocks did very, very well in the session today. In the second half of the trading session, you saw spurt in the agrochem space. Uh, even fertilizer stocks did very well. So have a look at some of these names, UPL, SRF, Tata Chem, Deepak Nitra, GNFC. All of these stocks, especially towards the later half of the trading session, saw a spike in the session. Along with that, insurance stocks. You, you, again, you alluded to this earlier, but you know both life insurance as well as health insurance companies, a lot of them actually saw quite a bit of spike cooling off a little bit towards the day's uh, end. Now, moving on, one stock that stood out today was Kansai Nerolac. You know, within the paint pack, Kansai Nerolac actually de delivered 
quite a muted set of numbers, but the company gave strong commentary and they also alluded to price hikes in the range of close to 2%. On the back of that, stock ended high by 8%. And Appar Industries, you know, declared its results during the market as itself. And on the back of that, very strong set of numbers, 5% higher for Appar Industries. On the other hand, quite a few stocks saw quite a bit of selling pressure as well. Warren Beverages, good set of numbers, but if, despite that profit booking scene after the stellar rally the stock has seen, in fact, it ended as a top NSE 500 laggard. CSB Bank, you know, came out with its result tape for yesterday, weak set of numbers, you know, uh, markets digested it today, down 4% lower. And lastly, Exide Industries, again, other stock, despite reasonably good set of commentary that the management gave, the stock saw quite a bit of selling pressure emerge after the results were declared. Exide is the one that we're talking about. Okay, yes, lots of reactions to earnings, Vic. Thank you very much. Busy, busy day today, going through a lot of those uh, movers and shakers. Let's talk about the ones that really stood out, Vivek. Thank you very much for that. Let's uh, now get to the specifics. Colgate Palmolive really has to be the stock of the day because the numbers were so solid and the stock was sparkling throughout, uh, you know, uh, looking absolutely pristine, even when the market was a little wobbly. Uh, the gain towards the end was uh, over 5%, just around 5% after the first quarter solid show came through. Uh, we've got Manglam joining in with the details. Manglam, so I think good brushing makes for, uh, I don't know, happy investors. I'll just say no cavities in these numbers. Let's put it that way. The stock was a record high today. Uh, you know, uh, across all parameters, it was a top-down beat. If uh, you look at just, uh, you know, the numbers, the revenue, the EBITDA, as well as the net profit, all of them not only beat our street expectations, but revenue growth of 13% was the highest that we saw in the FMCG industry so far in the first quarter. EBITDA growth 22%, margin improvement of 240 basis points, 33% growth in the profits. So all these factors, you know, whichever way you cut it, they were pretty good. In fact, the company said that it was led by high single-digit toothpaste volume growth. And again, the street was working with a number of around 2 to 3% itself, so that's a big positive. Brokerages were also pretty sanguine on these numbers. In fact, it's the third straight quarter of EPS upgrades from the stable of Jefferies. In fact, they've increased their uh, you know, target price from a little over 3,000 to about 3,570 as well. ICICI Securities says that you know these numbers are pretty strong. They estimate the volume growth to be around 8%. But uh, with the concern that after a big rally that the stock has already seen at 50 times FY26 earnings, maybe uh, it is a little stretchy with a few risks. So just hold is the rating that they have. And finally, we did have a comment coming in from Bank of America. While they maintain their underperform rating, remember they've raised their target price from 2660 to around 3175. And at the same time, they've increased the premium, uh, the multiple that they pay to a 20% premium versus what it was over the last five years as well. So it was, uh, you know, increased penetration of their products, faster growth in some of their premium products, and at the same time, improvement in their margins along with 8% volume growth that the street liked and the stock hit a fresh record high today. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, got that. So that's uh, Colgate, Palmolive, but uh, Manglam, while there was one big hit in the consumer space, there was one big miss as well, right? And it's a company that usually doesn't miss, Varun Beverages. What happened here after the numbers? Well, one cannot call that a miss for Varun Beverages. Yes, it was a miss on the stock price move post numbers, down 6.5%. But remember, it's already seen a 100% rally in the last 12 months. And preceding 12 months, it's see, uh, seen another 100% rally. In fact, over the last five years, the stock has moved over 1,000% itself. Uh, the stock split that the company announced with the results uh, was also... You know, one of the factors that had the stock a little, you know, off in today's trading session, but could be just a one-off because revenues, no problems. It was a strong quarter, 28% growth in the company's revenues, close to 7,200 crores on the top line. If you look at uh, the gross margins, that also improved by 220 basis points. EBITDA coming in just shy of 2,000 crores with a margin of almost 28%, along with net profit coming in at around 1,260 crores. The volume growth for them was 28% as well, where India volumes grew by 23%. And if you look at the carbonated soft drinks, uh, which accounts for nearly 75%, 76% of their sales, came in at around 32% higher. India, Sri Lanka, and Nepal, which is uh, the core of the business, accounts for about 83% of the revenue. And Africa, which will start to contribute in the second half of this year, largely because the current quarter was a low season, Africa in the southern hemisphere, so it's more winter than summer there. Net debt at around 5,880 crores, also pretty manageable given the size of their balance sheet. We had the management on our channel and they targeted overall volume growth at around 18-19%, the same as what they've done in the first half of this year with margins maintained at current levels. Sting, which is a growth driver for them, was 7% in the same time last year, is now 15% and they target this number to be about 20% by the end of this year as well. And Africa Snacks will add 
some new uh, revenue verticals to the company ever since they've announced this uh, additional ancillary plan with uh, PepsiCo in Africa. So that would be another driver to watch out for. Okay, Manglam, thanks a lot for that. Well, let's welcome our best. We have uh, Jay Ball of Cash the Kiosk who joins in as well as uh, Mayuresh Joshi of uh, William O'Neill. Uh, hi, gentlemen. Thanks a lot for joining in. Well, Mayuresh, I wanted your view, actually. You know, Manglam just told us about a couple of those stocks that were buzzing in trade, Varun Beverages as well as Colgate. Now, Colgate has seen a big, big run, but the street likes volume growth. They like the numbers that they've seen. So you may want to pay a better, a higher price for stocks that are performing. Your view on both these two names. Afternoon, Nigel. No, absolutely, I think. Numbers were stellar as far as Colgate is concerned. And the expectations in terms of a strong rural recovery in the second half uh, will mean that volume should be even better as we head into the second half in the next financial year. Well, obviously, I think the SKUs that uh, a lot of FMCG companies have, including Colgate, uh, for the rural market, for the semi-urban and the urban markets, as rural bounces back very, very smartly, uh, there should be an accelerated growth that you probably see in terms of volume numbers being maintained uh, with input costs expected to remain largely stable and more products that are probably being expected to get introduced. Uh, there is greater hope in terms of this volume growth sustaining going forward. Obviously, on one hand, you've got valuations which are uh, not too cheap, uh, but on the other hand, you've probably got some triggers uh, which might still be playing out for Colgate. Uh, so I think uh, anybody holding Colgate should definitely hold on. For Varun Beverages, as a clear disclaimer, uh, a few weeks back, uh, we offloaded this stock from our global portfolios. Uh, the valuations, in our opinion, are a tad bit too rich at this juncture. As Mangalam pointed out, last couple of years, this stock has given a stellar move. Uh, obviously, I think the kind of dominance that it has uh, when it comes to Pepsi, both for India, Sri Lanka, and the ne Nepalese markets, uh, that dominance should probably continue as far as volume growth is concerned. Uh, staying their energy drink is something that should continue doing well. And water's contribution as part of the overall top line in EBIT uh, should have a steady state show as well. Uh, obviously, how Africa contributes going forward in terms of both the value-added products and more products expected to get introduced there is something that will keep earnings uh, in momentum as far as BBL is concerned. Now, obviously, I think there has been an element of profit looking for the sheer outperformance both in terms of price and other things that the stock has delivered. And, uh, but we have, uh, as I said, uh, on the safer side, put some money off uh, a few weeks back. Okay. All right. Uh, Mayuresh Sreon, uh, some more questions in just a bit. Uh, we also have uh, Jay Bala of Cash the Chaos with us. Uh, Jay, what's your sense? I mean, on uh, a lot of these consumer names, do you see any trade here? Uh, what would you do with a stock like, say, Colgate? Tomorrow Tata Consumer, by the way, is coming out with numbers. So uh, anything you like at all? Yeah, uh, I like Colgate, and Colgate has potential scale as far as 3600 to 3800, so quite bullish, and momentum is uh, absolutely backing the price action. So, uh, for the higher highs due, probably lent, uh, the stock will probably add weight to the FCG index. Uh, if the anticipated um, macro were to weaken in, in, in the global macro, um, this could also be a defensive play. So, it's a multi pronged play for the, for the stock. Um, also, you know, the, amongst the stock that you spoke about, PCBL, that's looking very interesting. It's got a, a continuation inverse head and shoulder breakout. It's probably going to fresh all time highs and uh, it's slightly behind the clock. I was bullish on it uh, in March and slightly went below the stop loss in uh, during the middle of this year. But it uh, uh, seems like it was a, uh, <laughs> a bullish fail, a bullish uh, uh, and bearish trap and looks like uh, uh, PCBL is heading to some macros at 400 plus. Hmm. Okay, all right, uh, Jay got that view. Stay with us, gentlemen. Let's move to the sector of the day, Power. Two stocks were charged up in trade, NTPC as well as Power Grid. Vivek joins us to tell us about a quick analysis as well as commentary coming in from the management. Vivek, take it away. Well, over the weekend, both the NTPC as well as Power Grid came and gave you know their results. Uh, NTPC delivered a strong performance while the Power Grid with analyst estimates. Uh, now, on Monday, that's yesterday, both of the companies actually held analyst meets where NTPC went and gave a guidance uh, in terms of number one, uh, the capex, number two, its capacity, and what is it uh, that the company expects in terms of regulated equity. When it came to power grid, you know, they gave capex as well as commissioning timelines as well as a guidance over there. Now, talk about NTPC, very aggressive capacity addition plans. Remember, India is looking to add close to 80 gigawatt of thermal capacity by 2032. NTPC will be adding close to 26 gigawatt of that. Renewable energy, you know, what is it that they're looking at? 
they're targeting close to adding over 60 gigawatts and along with that they also alluded to the fact that the NTPC green IPO is on track. Uh, the company is targeting a commissioning in FI25, thermal commissioning in the range of 2 to 2.5 gigawatt and pump hydro in the range of 1 gigawatt. Commissioning in terms of uh, what is it uh, that the company is expecting will lead to regulated equity, regulated equity seen in double digit growth over the next few years. No wonder then brokerages were quite bullish. Uh, Jeffries went and raised the target price to 485 rupees a share. CLSA has a target price of close to 441 rupees a share. Now, coming to Power Grid, you know, the trend that we are witnessing is the fact that the company is continuously going ahead and increasing the capex that it has and also the capitalization. So, the capex, remember, FY25, they started off the year saying that they expect capex in the range of 15,000 crore. Now, they've gone ahead and raised it higher to 18,000 crore. FI26, they're expecting uh, it in the range of 25,000 crore and FI27, over 30,000 crore. Talking about capitalization, what is it that they're anticipating? 18,000 crore in FI25 versus an earlier guidance in the range of 15 to 16,000 crore. FI26 and FI27, they're expecting over 25,000 crore. Now, along with that, they also said they have work in hand uh, as well as, uh, you know, the transmission capacity pipeline of over rupees 1 trillion. So, very strong capacity addition from NTPC, very strong transmission bid pipeline for power grid. No wonder then the sector of the day today was the past pace. Okay, all right, got it. Thanks very much, Vivek, for that. Uh, yes, indeed, those uh, power stocks were really fired up. Uh, Jay, on the charts, uh, do you like anything and do you think that uh, this has uh, more steam ahead than the likes of NTPC, Power Grid or anything else in the power sector? Yeah, um, yeah two weeks ago, I had mentioned Tata Group as a theme, uh, you know, uh, as being quite bullish. So, uh, uh, Tata Power hasn't yet moved in this leg of the move along with NTPC and Power Grid. So, probably that with a stop loss of about uh, uh, 394 uh, three, uh, or 395, that'll make sense. Um, these stocks, KCU stocks have moved quite a bit and uh, the final high looks a bit exhaustive. So if this were to continue higher, Tata, Tata Power has higher potential than these uh, PSU news. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Jay. But Mayuresh, let's come across to you as well. Fundamentally, how are these stocks looking? I think very well placed. Uh, so as Vivek uh, explained it, uh, the expectations in terms of uh, the power capacity additions on the renewable side is expected to touch uh, 500 gigawatts over the next 8 to 10 years. Uh, and there will be accelerated investments uh, that uh, NTPC and power grid do a large part of this heavy lifting as well. Having said that, uh, the expectations in terms of regulated equity actually improving at a good pace uh, with the kinds of projects that are getting... Uh, uh, commissioned the kind of capex that is expected to happen over the next few quarters will mean that the regulated ROEs uh, should remain relatively stable for both these companies as well. Uh, and that will mean that uh, there should be a steady state show as far as the earnings growth is concerned. Obviously, I think NTPC with a dividend yield of 2%, power grid with 3.5%, uh, also look attractive as far as uh, uh, the yield component is concerned. From the generators, I think I would agree with Jay. I think Tata Power has hardly done anything, but there is a lot of expectations in terms of deliverables that Tata Power can have. CAC from the generator space as well is something that can continue doing well in terms of the sheer capacities that they will add over the next few quarters. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. We appreciate you joining in, giving us your take on the index as well as on individual stocks. Look forward to chatting up with you rather soon. Well, let's go to our next segment then, which is corporate options, uh, opinions coming in. First uh, on the list is KEI Industries. After a good quarter, the management is confident about FY25. They have guided for revenue growth in the vicinity of around 16 to 17%, with margins holding at around 11%. That's not all. It's also looking to increase the share of exports in the total sales pie from around 11% to around 15% in FY25. Next on the list is Zen Technology as well. The man management sounded extremely confident on the way ahead. The company expects to do 900 crores in revenues with margins in excess of around 35% in FI25. Also in the coming quarters, the company is likely to close out an acquisition which could be valued anything between 100 to around 500 crores. And for that, they said they could also be looking at a potential QIP. All right, uh, we're looking at uh, Payne's company, Kansai Narolak. The management guides for mid to high single digit volume growth as they expect volumes to improve. They believe that the competition will spur better growth for the industry. Next on the list is Maharashtra Seamless. Q1 was hit by high cost raw material inventory. The management guides for a recovery. 
with margins of 19 to 20 percent. Also adds that the company has uh, appealed to the Indian government to uh, enhance the anti-dumping duty on the import of some goods from China. All right, with that, we'll take a quick break. Come back on the other side and uh, we will get you D-Street chatter. Let's see what the buzz was uh, around this sell-off today. We'll have Nimesh joining in. And then, of course, all the events to watch tomorrow. Welcome back here with us on Markets Forward. Let's go across to Nimesh uh, for all the D Street chatter. I wonder what the chatter is like, Nimesh, considering the market's getting cold feet around 25,000, two days ru running now. Well, you know, some bit of profit booking is likely at, at those higher levels. But again, you know, the broader markets relatively outperform. The mid-cap index ended nearly half a percent higher. A lot of individual names are buzzing in trade today. The first name on my list is Protein e -Govern. A big move on that stock, up 700 percent. This month, the stock is up 70 percent, largely because some large H&I investors were got active buyers. I understand a leading uh, influential H&I investor now has owns close to 1 percent stake in the company. The second name is Z Entertainment. Well, the stock was buzzing out of the earnings, but there was, uh, there was selling pressure from larger FIs in Z Entertainment at these levels. Third name is ONGC. Uh, the stock isn't buzzing off late, but again, big move. A lot of HR interest as well in, in this particular name. And the city is now anticipating that maybe the company will announce some fresh discoveries in terms of uh, oil reserves very soon. The last name is REC. Uh, 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 you know, a bit of under pressure today, largely on back of self So expect high delivery volumes, but there is selling pressure in REC at these levels. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Nimesh. But before we wind down, let's hop across to Manglam. He's here to tell us all the key events we need to track for tomorrow's session. Manglam. Well, today in the second half, it was the financial services uh, index which was in focus because of the Nifty financial services expiry. Tomorrow is no different. Financials will again be in focus because it's the Nifty Bank July series expiry, the last trading day of the month of July, and Nifty Bank expiry on Wednesday makes it important to track in the second half of trade. What we'll also be tracking is a bunch of numbers that will come by. So Maruti, Suzuki, m and Tata Steel, among the few that uh, will be reported from the front line. And then we have a whole host of mid-caps reporting numbers too. For numbers that came post-markets today, we'll keep an eye out on Tata Consumer in particular. So that will move on results impact. And apart from that, there are a whole host of macro triggers that we'll be tracking as well. So you look at, uh, you know, the Ola Electric IPO press meet where the price band, etc. and the details of the IPO will come by. So the valuation of Ola Electric would be something crucial to track. Then you have central bank decisions of uh, US Fed and Bank of Japan that we'll be tracking. Macro data coming in from India will be, you know, the core data. We'll have the U EU inflation data. And finally, we'll also have uh, the US jobs data that will come by from ADP, the ADP employment data. All those things will be important to track. All right, Manglam, thanks very much for that. So busy, busy day lined up ahead. And with that, uh, it's uh, curtains on this edition of Markets Forward. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. Lots of news and updates right after this break.